Graham, good to be back at ETG. I said in our last video where we had a, a quick walk around the new showroom here that we we're going to come back and talk to you about some developments within the company. Every, every company grows and this has grown substantially, but tell us about the new structure. Well, I mean, you know, thanks for coming to, to our showroom and everything else. Uh, part of the reason for moving over to, to Wellsbourne and restructuring here was to be able to bring together all of our sales and service and spares divisions. So we're all working under one roof, which makes the synergy of developing our relationships for our customers much, much easier. So we had to move our big showroom at Southern to, to here at Wellsbourne and we're really proud that we've been able to get this uh, re-rolling again now. Uh, and as part of that, looking at forward of our strategy and working very, very closely with Martin Doyle, our MD, um, we're developing exactly where ETG fits into the market. So we've, we've got various areas that we're, we're working in. We've, we've done through the hard inch product, uh, the box shifting area of the market, which we've gone under our business development, which is still very important to us. Um, but we have developed more as a production solution company. And as part of that, we're now developing through our target market and into our key accounts. So we have a level of guys now that we've developed uh, good contact with where our future key accounts are going to lie within the UK. And then obviously under myself, we have our key accounts, which is you know, an exclusive club as we see it, you know, moving forward for, for our customers. And, and these customers are ones that came to us and were looking uh, for areas of growth for themselves. And we developed through our solutions ideas of how to get them very competitive in a global market. It's been a few years since the acquisition here at ETG and every business needs a settlement period which is fair to say over the last couple of years you, you, you've, been, you've been finding what's, what's working best, um, what customers like, what helps your business grow along with what helps customers' businesses grow. I'm quite interested to know a little bit more about the, the key account side and what sort of business fits into that remit. Well, the key accounts as, as, as how we developed on what I'm looking after is those customers that come to us that are looking for growth, uh, looking to be running more lights out so that there's various situations where they want to be able to be competitive through finding uh, more run time hours and productive hours during the year. Uh, and obviously they tend to fit in quite nicely with the products I'm very familiar with on Chiron, the Hankman Starmer. Um, but those sort of customers, we were able to now develop very, very good uh, solid turnkeys for them using uh, Nakamura, Quasar and Hardinge products as well. Um, Would so, they fit into any specific industry? Do you see a trend? Uh, not specific. I mean, we're quite open to not leave ourselves as, as unique as being one particular sector. But you could say the three main sectors that we're obviously developing is the aerospace, automotive, very strong in the UK, they do develop and, and hit quite high on our key account list. Um, but the medical industry as well is, is proving to be quite, uh, quite nice for us because they're also coming and very demanding type customers. So the, the sort of demanding customer is the sort of a customer that sort of fits in quite nicely with what we can do to try and support them. And what's, the, what's the advantage to, let's say, being, call it, in, in that club? What's the advantage to yeah, being in that club? Well, certainly when we see the relationship of moving somebody to that key account status within our, our business, that obviously then brings on that through that, not only as a sales potential for us, it, it's very important that we back that up right the way through the business. And that is from the service, being able to monitor that and say, hey, these guys are key accounts, they deserve the pristine service backup that we can actually provide. But also from that is that we have our technical engineering department as well, which will mean that these guys have an opportunity to use our technical engineers to be able to go and assist and point them in areas of our expertise where we could say actually if we manufactured this in a slightly different way we could make that more productive, we could actually probably make you a little bit more money out of that part as well. So those are the sort of things that we want to be able to give on a, on a weekly basis. And turnkey is, is quite a, a, a loose phrase, we hear it a lot, a lot of people can provide turnkey solutions, what makes you different? But I think what we like to do is differentiate ourselves in the market. And you're right, there's a lot of people out there that can actually get involved in turnkeys. But our sort of whole business and our ethos and our experience um, that we can actually bring into the market with a high range of high value commodity type products. So we, we can offer that sort of level of production solution uh, turnkey uh, what, what across would, all products. What would those things be though? Would they be knowledge? Would they be... Uh, equipment, you know, what, what do they comprise of? Infrastructure, commercial advantages, what, 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 
What are the yeah, points? Yeah, I, I think certainly commercial advantages when we, we look at everything, the part piece price is very, very key to the, the, the customer. Everybody can get involved in making various parts in various different ways, but it's how you can actually generate the most level of margin for that particular customer um, when they're actually manufacturing components. And, and we always really put that at the forefront. But our infrastructure here, as we're set up in Wellsbourne, is having a very, very strong technical application department, which we've been expanding over the last 12, 18 months, bringing the right people in from UK industry that can actually assist us in growing that particular area of the market, having the sort of service level behind that as well. So that will keep up with what our demands in the market is going to be. Because sometimes in these situations, you, you know, you may get the... The, the, excuse the, the phrase, but the kind of hot potato scenario, a turnkey project, uh, a project in, on the whole it, it, it's critical from the, from the very start to the very end and often the, the buck gets passed from one person to, to another. Is that different here at ETG? Do you, do you have one man control in the whole project or is there, is there different ways of... of uh, Absolutely, and I, I, th I think the key to any success of a, a turnkey project is having the right project management. And we've tried this in, in various ways ourselves and we, we now have an experience to know that the technical engineers that take responsibility for actually producing that component on the machine are actually some of the best project managers that we can actually have without somebody else being involved as an interim. So under our uh, technical managers, they will oversee and uh, generate an application engineer that from the point of order would see that right the way through, conceptual, may even be pre-sales, uh, so that they're fully involved, fully understand the customer's demands and see that right the way through until we've fully met all of our contractual agreement. What I always think is important is I try and put myself in the position of a, of a, of a buyer. If I was coming to you with a project, I'd like to see some evidence of, of, of previous success stories. Is, is there a lot of that around here? A absolutely. I think, you know, as a, our model and our base is really set around doing turnkey style engineering product. So we have a lot of knowledge and of experience. Obviously, when I go out and obviously speak to customers about trying to develop potential projects for us in the future, then that's very key for my presentations as well, as to say, you know, from our expertise and knowledge, this is what we achieved, this were the times, this was the part piece price that we were able to achieve for the customer. And those are the sort of things that buyers really look for when they're looking at potentially placing some business. And the, the, the restructuring of, includes as well the, the sale of commodity machines, which, you know, we, we, we do see around us with the Hardinge Bridgeport machining centres, uh, some of the Nakamura AS200 machines, fitting into um, manufacturers with, with demanding needs. Uh, do you tend to find people that are purchasing those machines will, will move in to be become a key account for you? Is there a natural path? Well, the, the progression that we see is, is that we, we have a business development part of our business, which is dealing with those, you know, I want to buy a machine today, what have you got sort of areas. So we, we have an area of the business that's going to deal with that. Then what we're looking for is obviously, as part of those discussions with that customer, is migrating them towards our target accounts, which is the sort of middle ground of where majority of our business potentially in the future could come from and then develop our key accounts from target accounts. So we have a very clear sales structure of how we want to develop a potential customer for the future right the way through our business and make them feel part of that growth as well and hopefully assist them in growing their business further. I think what is loud and clear, which was, was going to become one of my next questions really, the engineering technology group then aren't losing sight of, of, of the commodity end of the engineer that might buy one machine every two years. He might just want a three axis VMC with a fourth axis unit. He's still very much in the thick of that. Absolutely, I think you know that that is still very, very key to us. When when Martin brought that across from the Hardings products as well, we we've just looked very, very closely at how we deal with the commodity market, where our potential for future growth is in certain areas, and we will certainly can maintain that level of business and maintain those customers that still want to buy from us in that way. So to outline your role and the people within this new structure, what, what is your role, Graham, and who are you working alongside in the key accounts? Well, my role now within the business is head of key accounts. And, and we've obviously seen, through my development of our key account business, progression to bring somebody else in uh, internally across the business. And I'm pleased to say I've got Steve Brown, who's joining me into key accounts as a new key account manager. 
Um, and Steve, the background in the business, knows the Nakamura products, the Quasar, Hardinge, worked for Hardinge previously. So a lot of knowledge within the industry who's really going to assist me in working on our new plans. I can see people will have a lot of confidence in, in the collective knowledge of, of both of you two in that area. Then into, your, uh, into the business development roles, tell us about who, who's in there. Well, under the business development, we, we have a, a very clear structure that we've, we've re-established our telemarketing department as well. So we've got a fully-fledged telemarketing uh, department with some lovely ladies that are going to be phoning around and some of your customers are watching this video will probably get a call from us before too long. So it, it all starts in that particular area where they're lead chasing and obviously just generating what potentially is happening in the business. But backing up from them, we have John Mannion, who's also got a lot of experience within the, the hard as a business and joined us at ETG when they migrated into to our business as well. And John is going to be mentoring potentially two more guys that we're going to bring into the north and south that will help him develop and, uh, and all of those sort of closer tied leads where we get a, uh, a phone call one day, want to buy a machine the next day, John will look after all of that particular area very, very nicely. And then moving on from that, what we've done is we've restructured our target accounts. This is where we've done a lot of um, work in the market, establishing certain companies that potentially uh, would want to work with us or we would like to work with them for the future. Uh, and that would be a, a reduced number from our main database. But it means you get a, a very good attention uh, of those customers. And we have three guys, Stuart Cousins, who's been with us uh, for a while. We've got Anthony Biggs and Simon Higgs. And, and these guys are well established in the market as well. So, you know, we wish them every success in moving that part of the business on as well. It sounds like there's a lot, obviously, there's a lot of thought that's gone into this, into this new structure. What's the end goal? I mean, the end goal for us uh, as a business is to, to really stamp our mark in, in the UK market. Um, but that's also to be able to, to give our customers uh, prospects of growth as well. Through using our machinery, our experience, we think we've got something to take out to our customers that they would be interested in, in working with us on as well. And I think the mix that you have here of machine tool brands at the Engineering Technology Group really will assist you in where you're trying to get to, won't you? Tell us about the, the latest machine to be added to the portfolio or machines. Well, I was lucky enough last week to visit Pietro Carnaghi, uh, based in Milan, a uh, very big VTL manufacturer. That sort of adds something else to our portfolio as well. But they're sort of breaking into to new ground as well with the new release of a new product, the Flex Turn, which hopefully we'd like an opportunity to talk to you a little bit more about uh, further down the line, Paul. But, uh, but yeah, very exciting times for us as well. And, and we believe our principal companies, we've got some very, very nice brands there which offer something completely to the whole of UK manufacturing. And I think I'd probably finally like to touch on going back to the, the key account, the projects, the added value area again. Have you noticed as the engineering technology group that this is a trend in the UK market that um, you know, SMEs, precision engineers are starting to now look at automation, they're looking at you know, may maybe, well, just getting parts off machines faster in a more productive way? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. And I think you know, what, what we've seen is that you know, in the last couple of years, we've never quoted so much automation as we're doing at the moment. Um, and as I say, we've got a lot of UK businesses that do want to compete globally, um, looking for a little bit more. Um, and we do believe that our automation systems and across our machine tool range, we have something that definitely has something to offer on all potential projects. And the great thing is I can come here to Wellsbourne and not only see this kit here, but talk to guys in the know like you about how to get the best out of their machine tool and their company. Yeah. Absolutely, we're very proud of what we've got here and we look forward to seeing people through the door. Brilliant, thanks Graham. Thanks very much.